Floss Tube. Welcome back. This is Stacy, the 911 Stitcher. This is Floss Tube number 14, and today is Saturday, November 23rd. Monkey back is back. He's joining me this morning, and <laughs> he's he's happy to be back. My boy. So we're here today to tell you about cross stitch. So I have a lot of stuff to show. Let's get started. I'm hoping this video won't be as long as it has been. I'm uh, going to see if I can cut it down to about 40 minutes this time. So anyway, for all the new subscribers, welcome. And thank you everybody who is a returning viewer as well. So this week, no, next week is Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States. It's a time for family or even friends to get together and have a big feast. And it's all about turkeys and autumn fall colors and Usually it's a day that people have off, but because I was in law enforcement, I did not have any. Thanksgiving was the one holiday I think I worked every single year, and I usually worked nights. So sometimes I would be able to go to my family's house for a little bit, and sometimes not, depending on the, the shift I was working. So anyway, okay, let's get started. I have lots of stuff. I have questions and things I missed in my last video, things to tell you about. So let's go for news. As far as news, I want to say thank you to Andrea for sending me Vana's link on how to finish a cross stitch piece in a tart pan. She sent me the link. I clicked it. Looked like it was her blog, Vana's blog, and it was dated June fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. So anyone that's interested in learning how to finish a um, cross stitch piece or any kind of stitched piece in a tart pan. It's a great tutorial and it actually, she does such a good job on making things look easy, making it look like I might be able to do it. So we'll see how that goes. I gotta find a piece to, uh, maybe an autumn or a Thanksgiving piece to do and see if I can't put the tart pan together or Christmas even. So anyway, thank you, Andrea. And for all of you who mentioned Vana's uh, tutorial, thank you guys. Want to tell you guys about a really great rescue uh, fundraiser rescue. If you watch Ki uh, Kitten Stitcher on Floss Tube, she also has a website. It is Kitten Stitch. No, is it kittenstitcher.com? She has a store, a really great cross stitch store with lots of charts, lots of beautiful samplers. Teresa is doing a uh, animal rescue fund where you donate any charts that you might not use anymore or don't think you'll stitch. Uh, send them to Teresa. I just, just today, my husband and I went to uh, the post office and dropped off um, a bunch of, I have found a whole bunch of charts and sent her. What she does is she puts them on her website. So go to kittenstitcher.com and check out what she has available for charts to purchase. All the proceeds go to an animal rescue in her area, which is just, I participate in donations and fundraising for um, the German Shepherd rescues that are local. I have one in Norco that, this is the city right next to me that I've done a bake sale on. I've done tons and tons of cookies and treats and brownies and stuff for to raise funds for the shelter. So it's something I'm involved in as well here in California. And Teresa does it back in Mississippi. So check out her website. She's got a great store. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see, I can't remember exactly what it says, but you'll recognize it. It'll say rescue um, fundraiser or something. Click on it and it's got all kinds of charts that she has listed for sale that, and the proceeds again, go to the animals. So her email, I sent her, she sent me an email a couple days ago and said, send any chart. Um, it could be new or used. She will go through and post them. And I mean, if they're pretty tore up, then she donates them maybe to a local thrift. I think she said a thrift store maybe or donates them somewhere, but the ones that she puts up for sale, it's, um, it's really neat that you can do that. So I sent her a whole bunch of charts. Uh, it was actually, I take that back, it was yesterday I sent them out. And her email, she said to email her for her address. Her name is Teresa Vanette, as you guys all probably know. She is with uh, Shakespeare's Peddler. And um, her email address is xs, it's x like x-ray and a number, letter s like Sam, Peddler, P-E-D-D-L-E-R at yahoo.com. She'll send you the address in order to send the charts that you might have available 
to uh, join the fundraising for the animals. Uh, next up, I forgot to, um, well, that's okay. Okay, next up, um, I had a couple questions. MW asked about my travels and what has left the biggest impression. I have traveled all over the world and I think the biggest impression, I loved India. It was, it was the kindness of the people is what I loved so much. And, um, it's just a country that, oh, it's, I, I just wish I could describe it a little bit better why it left such an impression. It was just, uh, we were, Jean, Jean my, my friend that I talk about all the time, Jean and her husband and I and Rick all went on a trip this past April and India and Dubai were on our stop. So we spent two days in India and then about five, four or five days in Dubai. So both places left a huge impact on me because of how friendly everybody was, how different Dubai was a lot different than I thought. I thought that maybe I had to wear long sleeves and long pants and that they weren't very modern. Oh my gosh, I was so wrong. They are, they're more modern than we are here. <laughs> they're so fun. The people are so welcoming and same with India. They are very welcoming people. We were walking by on a tour and got invited into a wedding reception or pre-wedding party and they gave us drinks and we were just a tour walking by but they all said, come on in and we came in as a tour and got to have drinks with them. And I mean, who does that? That it would not happen here in California. <laughs> They'd say, keep on walking. <laughs> You're disrupting my wedding. <laughs> but these people invited us in and it was just amazing. So that left a huge impression. Um, Eastern Europe left a lot. Uh, oh, it was just amazing that how old the buildings are. We went to Prague. We went to um, Budapest and just some amazing, beautiful buildings. Um, I did find that the people in India and Dubai were more, if I had to list anything as far as friendliness, it was them. Everybody was friendly too in Eastern Europe, um, but nothing compared to the people that we got to meet in um, Dubai and India. So lots of places. I had some people ask about my my um, Christmas tree decorations that I mentioned, that I have a mini tree, and which is filling up with some decorations. In fact, I just realized that I forgot to bring my finished um, decoration. I'll see if my husband can bring it up for me while I'm while I'm taping because I want to keep it down. Uh, but as far as my big tree, it's covered with travel ornaments. And I don't remember if it was my last Floss 2 video or Instagram where I mentioned that I have traveled, everywhere I've traveled, I've brought home Christmas decorations. And um, it uh, is covering my big tree of all these beautiful ornaments from around the world, Alaska to... England to oh gosh just all over you you can imagine so someone asked they'd love to see pictures so maybe closer to Christmas I'll post a little tour of my big tree with the decorations at the end of the video for anybody that wants to see it uh let's see I wanted to also thank Betty one of the viewers who recommended the book Orphan Train she recommended me get this book and I started reading it and I love it this morning I happened to be reading the book and it, what it is it's about this girl who grew up in Ireland and she ends up immigrating to the United States through Ellis Island loses her whole family she lives in New York loses her whole family at the age of nine and um I don't know if it's a true story or not it does not I think it's fiction but anyway loses her whole family to a fire and now is an orphan gets on this train they call orphan train and she is now on her way to Minneapolis. Well, when she gets to um, Minnesota, the people are looking at her, um, you know, the adults that want to bring her home are looking at her. And as I'm reading this book, it says that the lady asked her, do you know, I, do you know how to sew? And then she says, do you know how to cross stitch? So I thought that's pretty fitting. <laughs> So anyway, it's a good book. It's by Christina Baker Klein. I recommend it also, even though I'm only about a third of the way in, I'd really like it. So thank you, Betty, for that. I appreciate you recommending that book for me. I also had a question for quilters. If there's anybody out here who does quilting, 
I have a question as far as Blackbird. I saw the most beautiful quilt on Instagram and someone posted, it was called The Raven by Blackbird Designs. I had no idea, is this the same Blackbird that does cross stitching charts? And I think they even do fabric. So yeah, I think it must be. Tell me what you guys know about Blackbird Designs as far as quilting. And if this is something like that's been around for a long time or if it's new, but I am going to get this quilt the pattern i've seen it on etsy but it was called the raven and it's just fantastic speaking of quilts so i showed you guys last week the halloween panel that i want to do that i'm starting to remember some of my quilting class um instructions so i thought i'm going to start with that real pretty halloween panel that i showed you guys and um just quilt it as it is because a lot of people said just quilt it as it is and add the binding which is, is you know I know I can do so anyway I go into my closet and I was going to get my, the rest of my quilting supplies out so I could start this um this little it's, it's going to be like a table runner Halloween panel so I went to Hobby Lobby got some uh fabric for the back and then I got the band the binding fabric and I already had the batting to go in between so I had it all laid out. I'm ready to go. I go into my closet and what do I find stuffed way in the back of the closet is two quilts. The one quilt, it's a wall quilt that I did in the class. That is, I can't believe I did this. It is always, it's done except for two sides of binding. That's it. All I have to do is the binding and that wall quilt is done. Then I started another one. It was a, a lighthouse quilt which is just a panel and I wanted to quilt that up and wouldn't you know I started that too didn't finish it wadded it up and threw it in the back of the closet so now how can I start my Halloween quilt panel quilt if I have two unfinished projects just staring at me and one of them is almost done like I said literally two sides of binding that's it so I'm like okay I can't start this I can't so I'm all excited to start the Halloween and now I'm like oh I gotta I gotta finish this one. <laughs> so I told my friend Jean and Gina that, cause we have this, this group text that we talk, and we talk almost every day, ever since Galleria, Gina's the one that we met there, which I mentioned before in a previous video. And I told him, I said, well, I'll finish this quilt. This was the one I did in my class. The colors are a little, eh, you know, they're, they're not, I like brighter colors. And this, the colors I had picked at the time, probably 15 years ago, they're, they're okay. But I'm like, oh my gosh, and it's all hand pieced. It's hand applique, it's all hand sewn. How could I not finish this? So they said, so I said, I'm gonna finish it, but I'm not gonna hang it up on my wall because it's like, eh, it's not that great. Then I started thinking, I'm like, my craft room that I do my filming in most of the time is the walls are completely bare. Now how could I not hang my very, very first quilt? How silly. So I'm going to finish it. I worked on the binding last night. I was able to remember how to do it and it's almost done. So I'll show you guys next week and I am going to hang that thing on a, on the wall in my craft room. So I have something hanging on the walls and it's not so bare. So that was pretty cool. I had a lot of people or several people ask um, the berries by Erica Michaels. I had a question as far as silk. If you look at the two, I don't think I have any berries here to show you but if you look at the top it'll say for silk or for linen I always buy linen but what I wondered is that I noticed take scary berry for example that I just finished last last uh, video if you look at the silk chart it's different it has a haunted house on it so I'm like I want to do that I want to do the haunted house one but I didn't know I would assume you can still look at the chart and just switch out linen but I, there was something, I took a class at Galleria and it was uh, Linda Stoltz, um, Erica Michaels designer um, or owner. And she had mentioned something about it being different as far as silk. I think she was talking about finishing and not actual stitching. So um, a couple people had said that yes, you can, you can still get the silk chart. It's just that it's on linen, it's gonna come out a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is get the other Scary Berry silk and stitch that up and we'll see compare the one I finished on linen comparing the silk and see how much bigger it is and I'll show you guys so that was pretty neat also thank you guys so so much for all the suggestions on how to organize my floss 
So a couple people had sent me a picture on, um, someone had posted, it looks like a little black curtain rod and you get these little plastic, I don't know what they're called, but it just is, it's like a little hanger that you stick on the door. <clears throat> so you don't have to drill into a door. You just stick them on the door, put the rod on there. And now you've got floss that you can just flip through. I loved it. So I told my husband to go to Home Depot and he did. He got a little bit different of a rod. It's a little bit thicker. So I'm hoping that the rings, which that's something I wanted to show you guys. Um, somewhere in here, I got those rings that you guys, oh, here it is. The rings that you guys told me about on Amazon where it's got the screw end instead of the clip that for me kept breaking. So thank you to everybody who suggested these rings. I got them and he is going to put the, I'll try and show it on my next video because it's going to be on the back of the craft room door where you put the curtain rod and then your floss goes along the, the, your floss rings go along the rod. So it's really neat. Um, also, I have decided that I'm going to do the stitch along through Hands Across the Sea. It's called Ann Roberts and it's a beautiful chart. I ordered it. I got the fabric just a few days ago. It starts January 1st. If you guys aren't, uh, if you're interested in samplers and you're interested in learning more about stitching them, um, there's a great Facebook group called, I know I wrote it down, uh, Our, Our Sampler Years on Facebook. So Our, our how come I can't say Our? <laughs> Not Our, H-O-U-R, it's O-U-R. Our Sampler Years on Facebook. It's a great, great group. Um, and uh, they're the ones that are hosting the Stitch Along starting on January 1st. So if you're interested in doing the Hands Across the Sea and Robert Stitch Along, join us because it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a beautiful, beautiful chart. Okay. Uh, oh, and before I forget, a lot of people asked me a couple emails and some messages on comments. Asked me... What designer was the wool applique that I showed in my last video? I went and forgot to say what it was. So this was what it was, snow filled days, or snow days, wool fillers. And it had these beautiful, small, and, and seems easy to do wool appliques. It is by All Through the Night. And the website is allthroughthenight.net. So sorry I forgot to mention that on my last video. Okay, let's go to new releases because there's a lot of them again. And uh, that way we can get moving. New releases. We have, I can't remember if I showed this on the last video. It is by Little House Needleworks called Mercantile. It is part of the Hometown Holidays series. This is such a cute chart. Um, next, I wanted to show you a picture of, again, through that same group, Our Sampler Years. There was a lady that posted, her name is Eileen Cross. She posted the most beautiful sampler. She just messaged me yesterday about ordering the chart. It is called Agnes Dickinson Quaker. Check this chart out, it's just beautiful. I love all black. And her name, her spelling on Facebook is E-I-L-E-N-E -E -E Cross, C-R-O-S-S. -S. She asked that you send her a message if you were interested in the chart. And I did see that post again on the Our Sampler Years Facebook page. So join them. They're a really fun group. I am I just joined maybe a few weeks back and um, I'm really enjoying what people post. Uh, let's see. The next new release is by The Blue Flower. It is called Sleeping Bee. It is so cute. And then after that, we have same, it's by the Blue Flower. It is called Winter Valentine. Starting to see some Valentine stuff pop out. <laughs> uh, the next one is by Waxing Moon Designs. It is called Valentine House Trio. Isn't this cute? And sorry, we're going through these a little bit fast. We have got Plum Street Samplers Winter Salt Boxes. Oh my gosh, I love these. So, so cute. We also have um, Hands On Design. Again, Kathy never fails at bringing us amazing goodness. 
and this is called Flower of Winter. It is part, of, I think it's number three, part of the House on a Hill series. And last but not least, we have Winter Wintertide Cardinal by Artful Offerings. Really cute chart. Okay, so that's it for new releases. And I wanted to thank everybody for answering the question for the giveaway last week. The question was, name something you've kept since childhood. And you guys, have, I loved your comments. I, I'm really enjoying learning more about you guys. And um, you've all listed some really amazing things. Lots of dolls, lots of books like Nancy Drew, um, Little House uh, on the Prairie series. There was another um, group of books. Was it the Hardy Boys? I can't remember. Lots of great books that you guys kept. Um, some people didn't have anything. They have memories, which I love that answer. I think that's an awesome, awesome answer because that's certainly something I hold on to even more is my memories. Old library card, Shirley Temple doll. So another lady said that she had her ponytail still when she was a little girl, her mom had her, her hair cut and so she kept her ponytail, which is so cool. I love that. Um, oh, and another thing that was really, really, really neat is that somebody said they also, I mentioned in the last video that I have, and I brought it to show you guys, my Princess Diana and Prince Charles paper doll book. She mentioned she has Jackie Onassis and Caroline Kennedy paper dolls, which is so cool. I would love to see them. I would love to see a picture of them. So I think it's funny because as soon as I opened this book, all these little pictures came out that I cut out when I was a little kid because I was a huge Princess Diana fan. And maybe someday I'll do a, a short YouTube video of all my memorabilia. I had a friend growing up who I am still really good friends with um, that lives in London or just outside of London. And we were pen pals back when pen paling was really popular. I was 13 or 14 and he was the same, same age. We switched addresses and ever since that age, 30 plus years, we have been really, really good friends. He comes out every Christmas. He'll be here December 26th for about 10 days, him and his family. So he would send me Princess Diana stuff. I have thimbles. I have porcelain little things. I have tons and tons of books. I have plates. I even have one of the official um, wedding. It's not an invitation. It's like announcement type of thing that, with the little... What's those things called? It looks like a curtain thing on the side, a tassel, and it's got a tassel at the bottom from their wedding. So maybe someday I'll have to do like a Princess Diana parade. <laughs> there are some really amazing things that he sent me. I have stamps. I have a letter from Princess Diana. When I was a kid, I wrote her a letter and she signed it, but her lady in waiting, her name was Susan Hussey, I believe. She wrote, she typed, she like typed out the letter, Princess Diana signed it, and I still have that letter somewhere. I'll have to find it and show you guys because I think that's just pretty awesome that they wrote back. And I sent it to Kensington Palace and she got it. So, or her lady in waiting got it. So, <laughs> anyway, check this out Paper Dolls. Princess Diana and Prince Charles came from England. Isn't that cool? My friend sent it to me. Look at this picture on the back. I think that's so pretty. But <laughs> you guys got to check this out. <laughs> Look at them. Oh my gosh. So now we know what they look like with their skivvies on. <laughs> but anyway, it's got, this is just one of the neatest pages. I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, but this is pretty cool her dress and then it's got some of her famous dresses that she wore um everybody seems to remember I think it was this dress that she danced with John Travolta with at the White House I think it was that black dress I have to look um we were fortunate when we were in London to get to see oh this was the famous dress where she fell asleep they took a picture of her this one here she was pregnant brand new pregnancy and she had fallen asleep at some state function or whatever but anyway I love this book I love 
these dresses are just, like I said, you look at the picture and you remember some of the things that she did in these clothes. But these are all her famous pictures of her gowns and stuff. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. And I thought I'd show you guys. So anyway, that's the question that you had to answer. And thank you to everybody that left these amazing comments because it was so much fun to read. The giveaways, let me go ahead and announce the winners. Giveaway number one was by Hands On Design, Time to Gather. This beautiful chart. The giveaway winner for this one is Laura Kittinger. Laura, send me an email. It is Stacer5, which is S-T-A-C-E-R number five at AOL.com. And I will get you your chart uh, mailed this week. Congratulations, Laura. Giveaway number two was 28 count crystal oaken cashel. It's a smaller piece, 12 by 17. Look at how beautiful that shimmery oaken fabric is. Again, 28 count. The winner is Nevada Stitcher. Yay, you won! Nevada Stitcher, I believe, has been following me since maybe close to the beginning. I thank you. Thank you for hanging for watching every week. I really appreciate it. So congratulations, random Google. Today, this time I used the random Google selector, chose you. <laughs> I'm excited you won. So send me an email. Number three was the Silk Weaver Ada 16 count Egyptian Sands. And the winner of this pretty Silk Weaver. I love this fabric. The winner is Carla Burgoon. Congratulations, Carla. Send me an email and I'll get this fabric out to you guys. Big congratulations to all of you guys. So on that note, guess what's back? Mystery chart. <laughs> this one, hold on, let me grab it. This mystery chart, I think it's hard, but it's only fair. So I told you guys before in the other videos that there's something for everyone. So if you're not into Erica Michaels or you're not into berries and you're not into cutesy, you know, like I have a really cute one by Frosted Pumpkin. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I mean, you're just, there's something for everybody. And so I felt it was only fair that we have something a little bit different this time. So mystery chart is going to be shown here. And the only clue I'm gonna give you is the style is primitive. So if you think you know the name and the designer of this chart, send me an email. Don't comment below. Those comments are for the giveaways coming up because um, I want it to be fair for everybody. If you think you know this chart, then send me an email at stacer5 at aol.com with your answer. And um, there's no question you have to answer this time. That's going to be for the giveaways later. So if you think you know the chart, let me know. And say you do know the chart, but you really don't think you're going to stitch it or you don't like it. Or it's just, you know, just something maybe you already have. Still enter because I have fabric as a second giveaway. So you have your choice of the chart or the fabric. So send me an email, guys. That's the picture. I will probably post a second clue on my Instagram, which is 911 Stitcher, and it's all spelled out. Nine and one. 911 is spelled out. On Instagram, I will probably post clue number two. Now, say you don't have Instagram, because I do have a few viewers that don't. That's okay. Send me an email. Let me know, hey, you know what? I don't have Instagram. Can I still get clue number two? I will post that on Wednesday this week. Anyway, good luck, guys. I hope you... Uh, can get mystery chart. Okay, let's show a little bit of haul because we're doing pretty good on time. I got, oh gosh, I have a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, before I forget, I forgot most importantly on my news. I, this was this was so cool. You absolutely made my day. In fact, when I got, I got a package in the mail and it was from a viewer that won a chart and she made me a bag. I like I said, I got a little bit choked up because I was like, oh my gosh, that was so thankful. And for those that win any giveaways, please don't feel that you have to send me. I mean, this is for you guys. I enjoy doing it. And it just, it makes me really happy to be able to give you charts and give you fabric and stuff. So, um, but 
anyway, she meant she sent me a bag. I'm, I'm all like, oh, I'm so excited. She sent me this beautiful, beautiful bag with silk floss, which this is funny. I think it's okay. I say you know your name, Mavis. Thank you so much. I have never felt silk floss before. If you can believe it, it is so soft. How have I not known the wonderfulness of silk floss before? Thank you so much. This bag is just, it's beautiful. I love bags. I bought a few this week. I really have to stop buying bags. <laughs> I think I have a problem. <laughs> anyway, this bag is just gorgeous. I love bags. I change them out all the time. When I finish a new project and I'm starting a new one, I grab a different bag. I love them. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So I'm just thrilled to death. Thank you. It's just beautiful. Okay, let me show a few things I got this week. One of them I'm going to show now is limited edition. I went over to a um, needlework shop that is by my house. And while I was there, he had mentioned um, a limited edition ornament by Just Nan, which he ordered for me. And oh, my nose itches. I'm not picking. I'm itching. <laughs> is it about someone on another floss tube mentioned how itchy your nose gets when you talk it's so true anyway it there's something in it there's the hanger and there's some beads and little decorations that are kind of covering the chart so I'm going to show you the bottom of it first this is by just nan oh there's the little thing but isn't he the cutest little mouse and stocking so this one I believe is for the mouse I didn't know they came separate I thought that the little mouse and the stocking were together in one kit, but I don't believe they are. This is the mouse. So anyway, very cute chart. I'm happy I got it, but I don't know. Uh, it says limited edition, so I don't know how long they're going to have it. And then this is the stocking by Just Nan. Isn't that cute? I have never done one of these. And it comes with all the, the kit comes with everything. Even, it even comes with the fabric. Very, very cute. And then the other Just Nan that I got is another limited edition. It comes with a beautiful butterfly charm. It is called Christmas Butterfly Ornament. Oh, and the mouse, I forgot to say, is called Gingerbread Mouse Fairy Stocking. So this Just Nan is called Christmas Butterfly Ornament, which I thought was absolutely beautiful. And again, there's the ornament that it comes with. Oh, and it's all even got the, it even has the Krennic. I didn't realize that it, it even had that too. But isn't this chart beautiful? You know, I don't see the other colors of floss. So you might have to order that, but I thought that this chart was so pretty. I love it. Okay, next I got, oh, and this is the card from Mavis. She sent me a real pretty, really pretty card to go with her bag that she sent me. That just made my whole week, it really did. Of course, everybody's showing this and I have to show it because I love it. My favorite magazine, the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, it has got the most adorable patterns in it this month. Um, so check it out if you have not gotten it yet. Check it out. It's really cute. Really great stuff. Oh, you know what? Before I show, show more haul, let me show you some progress real quick that I've done over the week. I'm a part of a group that you probably have heard. It's called Enchanted Stitches. Each, um, they have themes where you have to complete so many stitches, then you switch to a different, or you don't have to switch if you can have your whip fit into that particular topic, you stitch so many stitches and you get points for your group. Anyway, um, so I switched out. Uh, you'll, you'll wonder why is she stitching Christmas and patriotic and another chart? Why, how come she's switching so much? It's to fulfill the homework for this group that I'm in. Anyway, so I did stitch on Prairie Schooler Santa's House, the 2010 limited edition. That's really pretty. I did switch out the red. I wanted a brighter red. So I am using, I think it's Ribbon Red by 
um, Ribbon Red. I believe that's Classic Colorworks. This is my progress so far on him. Just a little bit, not much. And the linen came in the kit along with the floss. So I, I switched out the white because I wanted the bright B5200 DMC white and I did switch out that red. Um, the other one I worked on was, which I haven't shown in a while, Lady Liberty. I was ab able to get part of the band done. This is gonna be a drum. So you can see I'm starting on the flag. Excuse that ugly blue. I know how on my sewing machine, I know now how to use the zigzag. So instead of this ugly tape that I used to use, I can zigzag. <laughs> it's the little things. I'm so excited to use my sewing machine. Anyway, that's the band. I already finished the top, which I'm sure I've showed a long time ago, but this is the top. I used brighter colors because I wanted the drum to be really bright and pretty. So I worked on Lady Liberty. I really, I really like this one. I don't think I'm gonna attempt to do the drum. I think I'll have someone else do it for me because I want it to come out really pretty. Here's a bag I bought. Now, back in the 80s, I believe, well, that's when I grew up, the 80s. I absolutely loved <clears throat> Christmas. There was three shows. Maybe you guys have watched them growing up or um, your kids watched them growing up. You still might. I watch it all the time. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with the other one. Uh, of course, Charlie Brown. And um, Rudolph, Frosty the Snowman. And if you guys remember the Santa and the Three Bears with Nicobe and Chinook. I don't know if you guys remember that because they don't show that one anymore. I have it on DVD. It's pretty obvious on my DVD that somebody recorded it from a TV show. You know, it's not like the greatest DVD. I mean, you can still see the show. But anyway, it's called Santa and the Three Bears. If you guys remember that, it, it was very special to me and my brother and it still is. So um, we both have the DVD copy. But this is Frosty the Snowman. No, this was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So I got this project bag. There's Yukon Cornelius and Hermie. If you guys know him, put it a little bit closer. There you go. You remember the little doll on Rudolph? Oh, there's uh, the, the reindeer games. Oh, I just love this bag. Well, there's the... Um, that creepy abominable snowman. But the front of it has words. It's got um, Santa Claus. It has a Rudolph snowman. This is the most adorable bag. And um, so I got that bag this week. I also got another bag, which I have a whip in that I worked on. I'll show you that real quick. This, oops, I dropped all my floss. This whip is called Eva, or it's, no, it's called Clara Weaver by Eva Rosenstad. I've shown that before. Isn't that amazing? And look at the orange on the side of the borders. So I pulled this out because I have not worked on it in quite some time. There we go. It's a good picture of it. And this is that really stiff fabric I was telling you guys about before. Got a little bit of progress. I got the tree and I also have a cow. If you guys can see him. So I got more done on him. But the bag I bought is so pretty. I'm going to have to give you guys the names of who I got the bags from. Um, because I don't have that. And usually they stitch it on here. But I, I don't see it right now. So you guys know I love crows. Look at that gorgeous bag. That marbling of that fabric is fantastic. And this is the bag. It's nice and big. It's a little bit bigger than your normal bags. Um, usually they're 13 by 11, and this might even fit my um, punch needle because I have a large hoop. So I will get you the name of the two companies that... Actually, I'll post them. I'll add a little picture of uh, who made them. But aren't these beautiful bags? I just love them. Okay. Let's show some more haul, a little bit more haul. I have, oh, I gotta show you this frosted pump, the frosted pumpkin stitchery. 
Now my friend Jean and Gina laugh at me because they love the frosted pumpkin. I do too, but I don't like stitching little human people. I don't like like a smashed face type of, <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't like to stitch little people. I don't mind animals, you know, like little animals and stuff, but it's the people for some reason. Anyway, look at this. Isn't that amazing? I will get past it and I will stitch these little people because I think they are adorable. So this is the Frosted Pumpkin and the name of it, A Very Merry Christmas Town. Fantastic. I think it's just beautiful. I finally got the Teresa Kogut punch needle version of, oh, it's a different one. But I got this one too. From, I actually got it from Teresa Kogut on Etsy. She ships fast. So that's the punch needle version. This is what I'm going to start next because I just finished. That's what I forgot to do. Hold on one second. I'm going to call my husband and see if he'll bring it up. Hold on. Okay, guys, I'm back. So I was able to find out the names of the people that made the bags. The Christmas bag that I just showed with my favorite uh, holiday. Come here. You can come say hi. Come on up. Come on. My baby shepherd's here. He's the one who doesn't like to make appearances very often. So don't think he's going to. Come here. Come on up. Come on. Don't know if he'll join me today, but he's here. <laughs> oh, there's his ear. <laughs> They don't want to see just your ear. They want to see your beautiful face. Yeah, they want to see your face. Anyway, this bag, there he is. <laughs> this bag was done by, it was on Etsy. Wait, was it Etsy? Yes, the 805, ugh, excuse the hair, the 805 Stitcher on Etsy. Anyway, she did the bag. It's beautiful. The other one, this is on a Facebook group called Stash Unloading Cross Stitch Only. And her name is Kay Kiern, K-A-Y, and then her last name is K-I-R-N. So check them out, you guys, because they are really great bags. I'm happy with how they're made and I love the sizes. So the other thing I was telling you guys about uh, with Punch Needle was I finished, I do have an FFO, a finally finished object. Is that what it stands for? <laughs> anyway, I finished my punch needle snowman and I finished him myself. I'm so happy with how he turned out. So my mini tree has one more ornament on it. I think that's like five. I'm so excited. The beads were, I had the whole thing done. I put black felt on the back and, um, but the, I decided to do a beaded hang, hanger, which I love. I think it's really pretty. I was clipping away the felt, the excess felt on the back, and wouldn't you believe, wouldn't you know it, I snipped the thread that's holding the beads together, and beads just blew up. They flew everywhere. So I had to redo it, and I'm happy with how he turned out, but this is Punch Needle, and um, the chart is by Heart Creek Farm Creations. It was easy. It only took me maybe a couple days to do. Okay, let's go ahead and um, I showed you the frosted pumpkin. Let me make sure there's not anything else that I wanted to show you right away that um, <clears throat> you should check out. Lots of good Christmas stuff coming up. A couple things. Oh, another punch needle. I had originally got this in cross stitch at Teresa Kogut, but I wanted to do it in punch needle instead. So this was a giveaway in cross stitch just a few videos ago. So I did get it in punch needle because I wanted to do that. Um, and again, she is on Etsy. She ships really fast. I was, uh, I'll order from her again for sure. I think the rest of the haul I'm going to go ahead and show you guys next time. I, w I just want to make sure there was nothing like limited editions and stuff that I should tell you guys about. So... Let's go ahead and talk about giveaways for next week. I will be able to do one more video before my trip. We leave Sunday after Thanksgiving. Our Thanksgiving here in the U.S. is next Thursday. 
And then the following Sunday, I leave for the Netherlands with my friend Jean. So I'll be able to do one more video before we leave. And so I'll go ahead and do giveaways for this um, video. I should, if, if next video I announce the winners, I won't be able to mail it to you guys until at least two weeks because of uh, being gone. If I hear from you right away, I can have my husband mail it. But um, in the meantime, <clears throat> these are the giveaways for this video. So I'll show mystery chart again at the end. But giveaway number one, Thanksgiving themed, of course. We have uh, Brenda Gervais, Holiday Hoopla Thanksgiving. This is giveaway number one if you're interested in stitching this. Your question, now this is all going to go in comments. Your question this week is, tell me about the most daring or dangerous thing you have ever done. Now that could be something crazy like skydiving. It could be anything. It could be something simple like daring for me. <laughs> this sounds silly, but I had mentioned a few videos ago how intimidating it is for me to walk into a stitch room that's already full and look for an empty chair and ask if I can sit with you guys. To me, that's daring. I, I mean, that sounds so silly, but I'm just a really shy, you know, walking into a group of people that are already established at a table. To me, that's pretty daring. So it could be something crazy daring and dangerous or just something simple. So you're going to answer question uh, the question and then tell me if you are interested in number one. Then giveaway number two, we have by Homespun Elegance. It is called Country Spirits Delivering Plenty. This is number two. You can enter for both. If you think you'll stitch it and um, enjoy it, then definitely enter for either one or both. So let me know if you're interested in one or two and answer the question, the most daring or dangerous thing you've ever done. I think that's it, guys. I'll show you the rest of the haul, which is still a lot. I'll show you guys next more of it next video because I'm sure I'll have a lot of haul to show when we come back from the Netherlands. So I will see you guys next week for all the U.S. residents that are celebrating Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you have a great day. And for those of you working Thanksgiving holiday, believe me, I've been there more times than I can even remember. So enjoy your day. I hope you guys have some good food at work or um, you just have a really good day in general. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, give me a thumbs up. Uh, it would be great. And um, giveaway, I didn't give over giveaway, giveaway rules, but you guys all know I'm 18 years old. You know, you have to be a subscriber, blah, blah, blah. Um, Follow me on Instagram at 911stitcher. And uh, I will show you mystery chart one more time at the end of this video. And clue number two will be on Wednesday. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys next week. Happy stitching.